Show user experience functionality created to enhance workflow for user. At XBeam, we're all about striving to make the workflow of the investigation response quick, easy, and seamless. So first, we're going to start in the advanced analytics, and I'm going to look at one of my notable users here, Barbara Salazar. First thing I do when I click on Barbara is I first get context information. So I can see who Barbara is, what department she's in, what her title is, where she's located, her manager. All of this information can start to inform my investigation. I can already start to think about the things I know Barbara, maybe in human resources, should or shouldn't do in the environment. I can get a quick snapshot of any of the active cases or historical cases that this user has triggered. And then I get a risk trend, right? So I can actually look at this over maybe the last three months. And I can quickly see that most of the time in the environment, her behavior was low or no risk. All of a sudden, we see it spike up pretty quickly over the last several days. Uh, so this can help guide, again, that investigation that she's been accruing risk and doing anomalous things. I'm going to go ahead and I can drill into her timeline. And again, this timeline view is all about telling the story, helping the analysts understand what happened before, during, and after an attack. So this starts with a VPN login from Ukraine. I can see all of the different variations here related to this particular detection. I can see all of the individual anomalies here. The fact that she's coming in from a geolocation for the first time. And as we detect any anomaly, again, we want to help the analysts understand why this is abnormal. So we're there with a click and see these data models so they can really understand why something is abnormal. So we can see this full timeline view here. What's unique about Exabeam's timeline is it's showing both normal and abnormal data. So we can see this remote access to what looks like her device here, and it is, she's the top user, doesn't have any anomalies, which means it's completely normal. And then we see all of these abnormal connections here in between, which looks like lateral movement, all of these first access behaviors. We can see all of this behavior kind of uh, unfolding here. We see a remote login to a colo sysdb. We then see this user switch credentials. Barbara's now leveraging the SA account on the Colo SysDB. This is the first time she's ever done a credential switch, and it's the first time she's ever using the SA account. So we can see all of this behavior happening. Now, I can also see a login to a database server. And we're calling this out for Barbara Salazar because we know she's actually using that SA credential. And we can see the database queries. Again, these are normal queries uh, that have been run before, like a select star from the payroll table and a drop table backup. But even though she's done this before, we still stitch it into these timelines. So we can see all of this information here on everything that Barbara's done. Now, this is a great way to level set and understand, is this really a threat? Should I be investigating this? What should I do next? By default, when this reached 90 points of risk, Exabeam automatically created a case in our case manager. And that's what we're seeing here, is this representative case from Barbara Salazar. Playbooks automatically ran uh, to classify this particular incident and enrich it. So it's added all of these incident types. These are the things that we're seeing in that timeline. We saw privileged escalation, privileged abuse, abnormal access and authentication, lateral movement, compromised credentials. We automatically populate all of the entities that are involved in this attack. If I scroll down, I can even start to see more information about what Exiting thinks that an analyst should do next. So we add task lists. Under the detection and analysis, we list out all of the tasks we believe that the analyst should go and perform, like identify suspicious activity. We have things like review the user's profile, review normal activity for that user, which is already seen in the timelines. Now an analyst could assign these to other people, set due dates, add additional tasks. These task lists are also dynamic and they're driven off of those incident types that I showed up at the top. So depending on the incident types we see in this particular case, these uh, task lists become dynamic and add additional tasks as maybe an attack unfolds. The analyst can also leverage the workbench. This is where the output of all of the different actions that were run as part of the SOAR and the automation are. Uh, so I can see all of the different information that Exabeam gathered on various different events, on the different incident types, this is also where an analyst could run additional playbooks or run individual actions, like maybe they wanted to start to block an IP or some sort of uh, behavior. So this is really comprehensive in terms of the ability to leverage the timelines to get a quick snapshot of all of the different behaviors and anomalies that a user generated, and then pivot into that case manager's that system of record to really complete the investigation and response and take those response actions to fully mitigate the entire attack.